Welcome to this edition of News Today, a series where we briefly discuss and analyze important news of the day. Without delay, take a look at the headlines first. India lost 2.33 million hectares of tree cover since 2000, says Global Forest Watch. United Nations Population Funds released State of World Population 2024 report. Central Board of Direct Taxes signed record 125 advanced pricing agreements in financial year 2023-24. The Ministry of Finance has notified new foreign direct investment rules for the space sector in India. South Korea has successfully launched its second military spy or reconnaissance satellite into orbit. The Arctic's plastic crisis, toxic threats to health, human rights and indigenous lands from the petrochemical industry, a report has been released. In our very first news, India lost 2.33 million hectares of tree cover since 2000, says Global Forest Watch. It stands as alarming factor as the loss is equivalent to a 6% decrease in tree cover over the past 23 years. Before we begin, let us understand the difference between tree cover and forest cover. While the tree cover refers to tree patches smaller than 1 hectare and isolated trees outside of recorded forest areas, the forest cover is defined as areas larger than 1 hectare with a tree canopy density of 10% or more. The report is compiled by World Resources Institute's Global Forest Watch platform, which was established in 1997. It is an online platform that provides data and tools for monitoring forests and access to real-time data on global forest changes. Let's understand the key findings of the report. It shows that five states, Assam, Mizoram, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland and Manipur accounted for 60% of all tree cover loss in India between 2001 and 2023. On a positive note, the data also reveals a net carbon sink of 89.9 million tonnes between 2001 and 2022. Additionally, Lakshwadeep has the largest relative plantation area in the country at 76%. Now let's discuss the drivers of tree cover loss. Experts attribute this tree cover loss to a combination of factors, including deforestation, which accounted for 3.3% of the decline from 2001 to 2022, as well as the impacts of climate change, leading to increased heat, wildfires, and subsequent loss of tree cover. As per Global Forest Watch, tree cover loss due to fires has been highest in Orisha, followed by Arunachal Pradesh, 2001-22. In response, the Indian government has launched initiatives such as the Green India Mission, aimed at increasing forest and tree cover by 5 million hectares and improving the quality of another 5 million hectares of forest and non-forest lands. Another, the Nagar One Yojana program is also in place focusing on enhancing green cover in urban and peri-urban areas. As the world grapples with the pressing issue of climate change, this latest report from Global Forest Watch serves as a wake-up call for India to strengthen its efforts in preserving and restoring its invaluable tree cover for a more sustainable future. In our next news, United Nations Population Funds released State of World Population 2024 report. To begin with, the United Nations Population Fund, headquartered in New York, USA, was created in 1969 as the United Nations Specialized Agency for Sexual and Reproductive Health. Established by the United Nations Economic and Social Council, UNFPA's mandate is to support access to a wide range of essential services, including voluntary family planning, maternal health care and comprehensive sexuality education. Now coming back to the latest development, the report released by UNFPA titled Interwoven Lives, Threads of Hope, Ending Inequalities in Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights. The report in general deals with the women's sexual and reproductive health and rights, which include fundamental rights such as the right to be free from torture, the right to health, privacy, education, life and the prohibition of discrimination. Moving on to the key findings of the report, according to which India leads the world with an estimated population of 144.17 crore, followed by China with 142.5 crore. Notably, India's population is estimated to double in just 77 years. The report also reveals that 68% of India's population belongs to the 15 to 64 age group, while 26% are in the 10 to 24 years of age group. India's total fertility rate, or the average number of births per woman of reproductive age, is estimated at 2.0. 
The report also states that life expectancy at birth in India is 71 years for men and 74 years for women. However, the report also raises concerns about the persistent issue of child marriage in India, with rates standing at 23% between 2006 and 2023. Additionally, the report finds that women with disabilities experience up to 10 times more gender-based violence than women without disabilities. The three decades of progress 1994 to 2024 in sexual and reproductive health has ignored the marginalized communities mostly. Now let's also look into the initiatives taken regarding sexual and reproductive health. While in India, we have the Janani Suraksha Yojana to improve sexual and reproductive health and rights. In terms of global initiatives, International Conference on Population and Development Programme of Action in Cairo, Egypt 1994, and Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action 1995 are also in place. The UNFPA State of World Population 2024 report serves as a critical call to action for policymakers, advocates and stakeholders to renew their commitment to addressing the persistent inequalities in sexual and reproductive health and rights particularly for the most vulnerable populations. In the next news, Central Board of Direct Taxes signed Record 125 Advanced Pricing Agreements APAs, in financial year 2023-24. According to the latest data, a total of 125 APAs were signed in the previous financial year, including 86 unilateral APAs and 39 bilateral APAs. Let's understand what is an Advanced Pricing Agreement or APA. Initiated in 2012, APA is a voluntary agreement between a taxpayer and the tax authority that determines the arm's length price for international transactions in advance. The arm's length price refers to a deal in which the parties act independently without one influencing the other. Now, let's also look at the key features of the advanced pricing agreement. APAs are signed under the Income Tax Act 1961 and can have a duration of up to five future years, with the possibility of a four-year extension. According to these guidelines, there are three main types of APAs. Unilateral APAs, which involve only the taxpayer and the tax authority of the country where the taxpayer is located. Bilateral APAs, which involve the taxpayer, the tax administration of the host country and the foreign tax administration and multilateral APAs, which involve the taxpayer, the tax administration of the host country, and more than one foreign tax administration. Experts highlight that the APA program offers several key benefits. Firstly, it supplements the Double Taxation Avoidance Agreement DTA mechanism for resolving transfer pricing disputes. Secondly, it promotes ease of doing business, particularly for multinational enterprises by providing upfront tax certainty on their international transactions. Wrapping up, let's also understand a little more about Central Board of Direct Taxes. It is a statutory body established under the Central Board of Revenue Act 1963 and is responsible for formulating policies related to the assessment and collection of direct taxes in India. The CBDT operates under the Department of Revenue, Ministry of Finance. In our next news, the Ministry of Finance has notified new foreign direct investment rules for the space sector in India. The new rules of foreign exchange management, non-debt instruments, Third Amendment Rules 2024, amends the existing foreign exchange management, non-debt instruments rules 2019. The government has notified the new rules under Foreign Exchange Management Act, FEMA 1999. The foreign direct investment in India is governed by the FDI policy announced by the Government of India and provisions of FEMA 1999. The most notable change is the allowance of 100% FDI through both the automatic and government routes, which is a marked departure from the previous policy that limited FDI to the government approval route for establishing and operating satellites. Now let's delve into the key amendments to the FDI policy for the space sector. For activities such as satellite manufacturing and operation, satellite data products and ground and user segments, 100% FDI is permitted with up to 74% allowed under the automatic route and any investment beyond that requiring government approval. In the case of launch vehicles, associated systems or subsystems and the creation of space ports for launching and receiving spacecraft, 100% FDI is allowed with up to 49% under the automatic route and the remaining subject to government approval. With respect to the manufacturing of components and systems or subsystems for satellites, 
ground segments and user segments has been opened up to 100% FDI under the automatic route. These changes are driven by the government's desire to integrate Indian companies into global value chains, attract potential foreign investors in India space and enhance the ease of doing business in the space sector. The influx of FDI is expected to generate employment and increase India's share in the global space economy. As the space industry continues to evolve, these new FDI rules are poised to unlock a world of opportunities for both domestic and international players. The space sector with its vast potential for innovation and technological advancement is set to soar to new heights, bolstered by the increased flow of foreign investment. In our next news, South Korea has successfully launched its second military spy or reconnaissance satellite into the orbit. Launched by the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, underscoring South Korea's growing capabilities in the realm of space-based intelligence gathering. The satellite, equipped with the Synthetic Aperture Radar system, is capable of producing high-quality images regardless of weather conditions, providing South Korea with a powerful tool to monitor the military activities of foreign countries. Delving into the news, let us first understand about spy or reconnaissance satellite. These satellites play a crucial role in gathering intelligence information like monitoring the military activities of foreign countries and can be either communication satellites or Earth observation satellites capable of picking up and recording radio and radar transmissions as they pass over a country. Major types include optical imaging satellites, they have light sensors that detect missile launches and see enemy weapons on the ground. Another one is the radar imaging satellites, which can observe the Earth using radar technologies even during the cloud cover. And lastly, signals intelligence or ferret satellites. These satellites can capture the radio and microwave transmissions. Countries around the world such as the United States, China and Russia have long invested in developing and launching their own reconnaissance satellite programs, including the USA's Keyhole series, China's Yaogan series and Russia's Persona series respectively. India too has its own radar imaging satellite too or ReSat 2 which is generally considered to be a reconnaissance satellite. However, the proliferation of spy satellites is not without its concerns. The militarization of space, the potential for promoting mistrust among countries, for example, North and South Korea, and the dual-use nature of the technology, which could be used as orbital weapons by placing warheads on a low-orbit satellite to be launched at a ground target, are all issues that the global community must grapple with. Particularly, the concern around China's reconnaissance satellites and their ability to collect crucial military information about India is a matter of ongoing strategic consideration. As South Korea celebrates this latest space-based achievement, the implications of this technological advancement will undoubtedly ripple through the geopolitical landscape, raising questions about the delicate balance of power and the need for greater transparency and cooperation in the realm of space-based intelligence gathering. Ahead in the news, the Arctic's plastic crisis, toxic threats to health, human rights and indigenous lands from the petrochemical industry, a report has been released. The report released by the Alaska Community Action on Toxics and the International Pollutants Elimination Network has shed light on the alarming crisis unfolding in the Arctic region due to the environmental violations of the petrochemical industry. If we talk about the International Pollutants Elimination Network, then it is a global network aiming to build a global movement for a toxic-free future. The key findings of the report are troubling, as it reveals that the environmental violations by petrochemical industries are the reason behind the pollution in the Arctic, it includes oil spills, release of hazardous substances and more. The report has also shed light on how the Arctic has become a hemispheric sink, where plastic and toxic chemicals from around the world accumulate, carried by atmospheric and oceanic currents through a process known as global distillation or the grasshopper effect. These pollutants are threatening the environment and health of the Arctic people. Pollutants like polyaromatic hydrocarbons are the ones that can cause cancer and heart disease and bisphenols that can cause obesity and cancer. Adding to the woes, the rapid warming of the Arctic is causing displacement and threatening the food security of these indigenous communities such as Eliot, Yupik, Inuit, etc. further exacerbating the human rights challenges they face. In response to these pressing issues, the report offers a comprehensive set of recommendations. These include ending government subsidies to fossil fuel and petrochemical industries, adopting the Louisville Charter for safer chemicals to eliminate toxic chemicals and plastics, integrating just transition framework principles in policies, 
strengthening the implementation of the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants and adopting a legally binding global plastics treaty. While the challenges facing the Arctic region are daunting, let's look into the ongoing initiatives to save the Arctic region and also aimed at addressing these concerns. The Arctic Council, a cooperative forum comprising the eight Arctic states, plays a crucial role in facilitating environmental protection and sustainable development in the region. Its members include Canada, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Russia, Sweden and the United States of America. Additionally, the recently adopted UN High Seas Treaty holds the potential to mitigate the impacts of climate change on the Arctic. India too has unveiled its Arctic policy reflecting a keen interest in understanding the implications of climate change in the Arctic and its impact on India's climate and energy security. As the world grapples with the plastic crisis and its cascading effects on the fragile Arctic ecosystem, the call for concerted action by governments, industries and the global community becomes ever more urgent. The health, human rights and the very future of the indigenous people of the Arctic depend on our collective ability to address this pressing environmental challenge. The personality in news for today is Dhiran Chinnamalai. He is in news as he was remembered on his birth anniversary on 17th April. Born as Tirthagiri in present-day Tirupur district, Tamil Nadu, he was a master in all arts and crafts of guerrilla warfare. He was also a Palayakarar and chieftain who was the ruler of Kongu Nadu region. Tragically, he was hung by the British at Sangakiri Fort in Tamil Nadu. Talking about his key contributions, he helped Tipu Sultan in his war against British and was instrumental in victories at Chitteshwaram, Malavalli and Sri Rangapatna. He exhibited the values of courage, leadership and patriotism throughout his life. As we conclude today's main news, let's take a look at some quick updates. Russian peacekeepers have begun withdrawing from Nagorno-Karabakh following Azerbaijan's recapture of disputed territory from Armenian separatists. Nagorno-Karabakh region is known as Artsakh by Armenians. It is a landlocked mountainous region officially recognized as part of Azerbaijan. Experts are expecting that Bitcoin halving event will occur soon. It refers to the 50% reduction in the reward paid to Bitcoin miners. Bitcoin miners successfully process other people's cryptocurrency transactions to that they can be added to the public digital ledger known as the blockchain. Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India took disciplinary action on insolvency professionals. It was established in 2016 under Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. It is responsible for implementation of code that amends laws relating to reorganization and insolvency resolution of corporate persons, partnership firms, and individuals in time-bound manner. Indian Navy seized drugs in Arabian Sea as part of Multi-Nation Combined Task Force 150 under Combined Maritime Forces. Drugs are seized under Operation Crimson Barracuda, first such operation conducted by an Indian Navy after India joined CMF in 2022. Submersible Platform for Acoustic Characterization and Evaluation, a premier testing and evaluation hub for sonar systems for Indian Navy set up by DRDO. Space will consist of two distinct assemblages, a platform which floats on water surface and a submersible platform which can be lowered to any depth up to 100 meters. As per reports, Israel used GPS spoofing against Iran. GPS is a satellite constellation supporting highly accurate positioning, navigation and timing measurements worldwide. It is owned by the United States. As per recent study, scientists are looking for a new model to explain Hubble tension which is not explained by cold dark matter or Lambda CDM model. Lambda CDM explains various features of the universe including radiation left over from the Big Bang etc. Kesariya Stupa is the tallest and largest Buddhist Stupa in the world. Located in Bihar, it is built in circular shape and its structure is made of bricks, mud and lime mortar. Before we go, it's time to put your knowledge to the test in today's segment of Test Your Learning.
Thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get the answers to the quiz and to download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the links in the description below.